All right, all right, all right. That is the energy we are on today, family. Today is uh, Tuesday, April 12, 2022. Currently 1036 a.m. here on the East Coast, Philadelphia area. About 52 degrees outside, headed up to about 70. Um, I wanted to drop in real quick to get something off my chest before I, you know, continue on with my day. Um, I got a quick workout plan, then I got to go pick up my daughter from child care and got just a bunch of stuff to do. I feel like I'm like the busiest, busiest black man in America, but, um, you know, I try hard to keep it, to keep it all organized, keep it all together, uh, and to do it in a way where I can maintain, I mean, my mental health and all that good stuff. But that being said, man, I got something I really want to get off my chest here. And I've, I've decided that I'm actually going to do a war talk uh, this coming Sunday on this particular uh, topic. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, this past Friday, I was um, a guest on Black Power Media uh, with Dr. Jared Ball um, to discuss uh, the press release that Afrocentricity International put out back on the 31st of um <laughs> of March just detailing the reasons behind our split or break with Dr. Malefe Asante. And, you know, the, the interview was pretty much going well. Um, but when we got to the part of the interview that dealt with uh, queer theory, we talked about, you know, one of the many reasons why we felt it necessary to signal publicly that we were separating from Dr. Asante in terms of the direction that he's currently going in. Um, we talked, the main reason being, you know, his rejection of race as a, as a primary, as a primary factor or primary, uh, principle in organizing black people, you know, that was very significant for us. But furthermore, we talked about his embrace of so-called humanism or Afrocentric humanism and Afrocentric futurism and Afrocentric queer theory. So, as you know, queer theory, anything to do with the LGBTQ community definitely gets the people going. So I feel like when Dr. Ball touched that nerve, the chat kind of like got set on fire. Um, and that was the the remainder of the interview. Like, I just felt like it was an interview about, about you know, queer theory. And I feel like... Um, you know, I definitely stood my ground in terms of why uh, queer theory is not compatible uh, with the aims and objectives of Afrocentric theory or Afrocentricity. Um, and I think that I was really clear on that. But you have this knee-jerk reactionary reflex that often comes from people on the black left um, when you're talking about uh, queer theory and the danger of, of, you know, this particular, you know, malware ideology, they do this knee jerk thing where it's like, hey, well, you know, you know, gay people have space, um, you know, in, in this revolution. And historically, we've had gay people, you know, in, in the revolution, yada, yada, yada. Like, it's, it's a bunch of bullshit. And first of all, like, I'm not talking about gay people. I could care less about like gay people. Like that's not, you know, that's not the, um, you know, that's not my mission. That's not my objective. I'm not here trying to create space for, for, for gay people or transform society so that it is more accepting of gay people. Like that's not my mission. If that's what you are on, then cool. That's perfectly fine. But like we were having a conversation about queer theory, right? And, and, and the need to do this reactionary, like reflexive thing where it's like, Hey, I just want to make it clear that like, I'm friendly to gay people. Like, this is something that like folks on the black left continue to do. Like you get like this, this milly mouth, very weak, uh, like, you know, milk toast analysis when it comes to queer theory, they don't want to touch it. And to be honest, like, you know, from from my perspective, like the the black left has nothing to offer to offer um, in terms of thought leadership in the 21st century. Um, the black left uh, at this point is very uh, dogmatic. In my opinion, um, it's like a secular religion. Um, many of the people who get indoctrinated into the black left do so on the college campus, um, but they don't know how to think. They're not critical thinkers. 
A lot of these folks that I see, especially online, can't thank their way out of a paper bag. Um, and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to like right now, I'm just getting this shit off my chest because, you know, after the interview, I'm going to read this to y'all and y'all, y'all will hear why, why I'm a bit frustrated. You know what I mean? Um, but after the interview, I got a DM from Dr. Ball. Y'all know I've been on this Keparai challenge, so I haven't really been checking my social medias. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't have social media on my phone at all, but every once in a while, um, I'll just do a. You know, I'll check all three at once. I'll get on my on my computer or my laptop and I'll check my Twitter DM, my Instagram DM, and my Facebook DM. Similar to how I check my email, but I I check my email a lot more frequently. But those is like I know that sometimes people try to reach out to me there, so let me just check. So I get on. Um, this is uh two days ago, I get on, and I see that there's a message there from Dr. Ball. Um, just follow, it was a follow-up message from the show and he writes, uh, thanks again, my man, that was dope. And I just replied very simply, uh, always, you know, thanks for having me. And just as an FYI, I shared with him the clip on, uh, from Dr. Derek Jensen, uh, who's a radical, um, environmentalist. Uh, and when he was talking about queer theory and its connections to, uh, uh, to pedophilia, right? So I shared with him that clip, the short version, and I shared the longer version um, of the clip because I know he had mentioned during the interview that he doesn't know anything about queer theory. He's not, you know, promoting queer theory or anything like that, which in my, from my perspective, uh, it's a cop out. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people want plausible deniability. Like this is the issue of our day, like in terms of politically. If you don't have a perspective on this issue, then your perspectives are irrelevant, right? If you don't have a perspective on the gender and queer theory and its aims and objectives in terms of how that relates to the black community, to the black family, and to our and to and to our ideas of a black nation, then we don't need to hear from you. I mean, if you stuck on some 20th century, uh, you know, communism bullshit, right? Because like. You know, uh, you know, c- communism, like, it's like, first of all, you, you're constructing yourself as a worker. You're having these conversations about labor in the 21st century where fucking labor is being removed. Right. Like, so like this, there's, there's, there's so much like weakness and, and flawed logic um, and their politic that doesn't compute with the 21st century. And at this point it is religious. It is dogmatic. And, and like when people talk about, you know, the revolution, like what revolution? I'm not involved in the fucking global revolution of workers, right? I don't construct my identity as a worker. So my revolution is not about fucking, uh, you know, uh, you know, snatching the means of production and, 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 and reallocating, uh, you know, the wealth that comes from, you know, the industrial economy, you know, from the few to the many. Lord, oh, that's not my fucking revolution. That's not even how I understand wealth. My revolution is about securing the land. It's about organizing black folks all over this fucking planet to reclaim our inheritance. And when we have our wealth back, we will determine based upon our cultural values, how we allocate that wealth and what our relationship with with that wealth will be. And that's the problem with a lot of these folks on the black left. They can tell you what they're against, but they're, they're afraid to tell you what they're for because they don't have any fucking original ideas in terms of what they're for. All of their ideas are a fucking remix of these white ideas that come out of Europe. And you can't strip those ideas from the culture and the values that produce them. Right. So I want, I want to just play. I'm not going to play. I'm going to read Dr. Ball's response to me sharing with him information to inform him on queer theory since he says he, he doesn't know anything about it. So he, he responds to me, re- replies to me in a very condescending way. He writes, yeah, so I'm not uh, interested so much in watching all this queer theory. And I think my point keeps being missed here. Despite me saying repeatedly that I am not a proponent of, or even familiar with queer theory, it seems that my defense or inclusion of gay Africans and my concept of nation and struggle is confused with the defense of European queer theory. Yes, because you are the one who was conflating it. The press release talked about why Afrocentricity and queer theory are not, um, 
compatible. So I'm giving a response to queer theory. And in my response to queer theory, you jump to defending gay people. I'm not talking about gay people. I'm talking about queer theory. So yes, your defense of gay people in the face of me having a conversation about queer theory, you are the one that's fucking conflating it. And then I get this condescending ass response from him. And, and then he goes on to say, I cannot be more clear on my stance here, but the over attention paid to white theory has too many Afrocentrists ignoring their own African history of militant struggle, which has always included gays. Assuring their radicalism makes more sense than claiming such logic as promoting whiteness and queer theory. Hold on one second. Like, and this is another thing again that, that frustrates me when they talk about like, the black left, when they talk about radicalism, they mark they they mark that shit like uh, at the the black radical tradition. They start that shit at the beginning of the twentieth century, basically with with the black movement interfacing uh, with um, the communist movement. My idea of fucking of, of of radicalism goes beyond fucking you know your involvement with 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 Marxism or with the development of a black left in the twentieth century. My idea of fucking radicalism or revol a revolution starts with the Africans who fought back on the shores of the African continent. My idea of fucking radicalism or revolution starts with the Africans who fought to fucking uh, overthrow the ships that were fucking bringing them across the Atlantic. My idea of radical radicalism and revolution is the fucking Africans who burnt plantations down. I don't start my shit in the 20th century. Right. I'm, when I talk about my fucking continuum of resistance or radicalism it's not these fucking ideas that that y'all have. So when we talk about the revolution, we're not even talking like y'all idea of a revolution is this, you know, international workers united all over the world, this socialist revolution. And that's cool that y'all caught up in that shit. But that is not that's y'all idea of revolution. You know, but let me let me keep reading because this shit gets more condescending as I go and that's like and I'm like you know what let me just do a quick get this shit off my chest but it gets more uh, condescending he says and pedophilia is not the result of homosexuality first of all nobody ever made that fucking stupid ass argument like if you're talking to me you're not talking to your comment section or your chat section I shared a, a, a lecture or presentation with you where the lecturer slash presenter is breaking down via documentation the connection between the promotion of pedophilia and queer theory. Queer theory is what we are talking about here. You don't have a position on it. You saying you're saying you don't even want to learn about it. You saying I don't know about it. I don't want to learn about it. I'm not promoting it. Meanwhile, this particular uh, ideology or framework is like the fucking animating thrust behind. Um, this current iteration of the so-called leftist movement. So how you don't have a position on it as a black person, right? So let me keep on reading here. He says, that's just nonsense. And all that to say, I don't need an education on queer theory as much as I think anti-gays need more education on political struggle. Condescending as fuck right here. So I'm definitely going to do a war talk on this this coming uh, Sunday. I don't need an education on queer theory, i.e. I don't need to have a position on it. I can stand in my ignorance on queer theory. And when you're critiquing me on queer theory, I'm going to turn around and say, hey, you're being anti-gay. This is some intellectual, cowardly, fucking dishonest bullshit right here. That's what this is. That's what this response was. I'm going to paint you as being anti-gay because you're critical of queer theory and saying that it has no place in a black revolution. So that's my that's my rant for today, y'all. Like y'all real y'all got a real fucking soapbox today. Cause that that's this this is the this is the uh you know, I'm like, yo, I, I reply to this shit with one word. He got a one word response to me from me. My response was interesting period because that was some condescending bullshit how the fuck do you say i don't need an education on queer theory as much as i think anti-gays need more education on political struggle nigga yo yo i'm listen man listen i'm trying to be respectful even with the smoke i'm trying to be respectful because like yo the disrespect, the condescension, 
I, I don't, I don't, I don't got it in me to take certain shit passively, especially when I offer you respect. Nigga, if I, if I offer you my hand and you spit in my face, I'm liable to cut your fucking head off, nigga, and piss in that shit. Like, yo, don't fucking play with me, yo. All right, listen, let me calm down. Woosa, I'm supposed to be over here on my Kepara shit, transformation. You know I mean, trying to be peaceful, trying to be zen. Trying to connect, yeah, you know I mean, but yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to ground my energy, yeah, you know I mean, like I got a lot of good things happening, a lot of great things happening, and sometimes, like y'all know me, I be trying to be diplomatic, I really do, but sometimes, man, these Negroes will make you fucking pull out the sword, like so. On Sunday, I'm gonna do a war talk called uh, Jared Ball, the Black Left. And champions of queer theory because we got to address it. And no, no more hiding behind. I don't know what queer theory is, and I don't care. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Like, that's an endorsement at this point. It's a tacit endorsement. If you don't know what it is and you don't want to speak against it, then you're for it. Fuck it. That's where we at with this shit. All right, so I'm tapping out, man. I talk to y'all soon. Uh, hopefully, y'all enjoy. This soapbox, which today just happened to be a rant. (laughs) All right, I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.